Capillary blood sampling is often used to obtain samples for baby or infant blood testing. The heel may be the preferred sampling site, depending on age, weight, and whether or not the infant or baby is walking. Let's take a look at the capillary sampling procedure used for babies or infants who are not yet walking, based on global guidelines and the recommendations of key opinion leaders. As with all clinical procedures, always use your professional judgment and take account of your national, regional and institutional guidelines. Start by consulting your institution's guidelines for the type of test you are planning to perform. Determine the amount of blood you will need to collect and gather the equipment required to perform the procedure. Equipment may include gloves, alcohol pads, gauze, safety lancets, a bandage, blood collection paper, capillary tubes or other capillary blood collection tubes, and a biohazard sharps container. Make sure you are aware of any labelling requirements for blood collection paper and devices. Selecting an appropriate heel incision safety lancet. The heel incision safety lancet should be selected according to the age and weight of the baby or infant and the type of test you are performing. Heel incision safety lancets are available in a variety of blade types and needle dimensions to achieve the right sized incision for an adequate sample volume. These lancets are distinguished by colour and are designed to minimise discomfort for the baby or infant. Puncture blade lancets perforate the skin in a vertical motion, whereas motion blade lancets perforate the skin at an angle, cutting through more capillaries than a puncture blade at the same depth. Motion blades, therefore, may allow you to collect larger blood samples, which are required for particular tests. For the average 3 kg or 6.5 pound baby or infant, the heel incision at the recommended puncture sites must not penetrate deeper than 2 mm into the tissue to avoid puncturing the bone, which may cause infection and serious injury. Babies or infants over 6 months old, weighing more than 10 kg or 22 pounds, should be sampled on the ring or middle finger, rather than the heel. When performing multiple tests on capillary blood collected during the same procedure, it is important to maintain the correct order of sampling, otherwise known as the order of draw. Maintaining the correct order of draw can help to prevent inaccurate results. Each collection tube cap is coloured to indicate the type of additive inside. This, in turn, corresponds to the type of test or tests for which it is intended. These colours are universally consistent. The additive chemicals are designed to ensure that the blood is in the state specifically needed for testing. The additive or chemical inside each tube may cause the blood to clot or prevent it from clotting, depending on the need for testing. The lavender collection tube is used for haematology specimens, such as complete blood counts or hematocrits. This type of tube contains an additive formulated to prevent blood from clotting. The green, red and gold collection tubes are mostly used to test blood chemistry, which includes blood glucose, sodium, potassium and other electrolyte tests. The green tubes contain additives formulated to prevent blood clotting, while red and gold tubes will allow the blood to clot. Maintaining the correct order of draw by cap colour is therefore essential. Depending on which tests are being carried out, you may not need to use every coloured collection tube. You may, for example, only need to use the pink, lavender and light green tubes, or you may need to use three red tubes. The most important thing to remember is that wherever you start with the cap colours, you must follow the correct colour order from that point on. There are specific guidelines available to help you choose a safe and appropriate heel sampling site. The medial or lateral plantar surface at the back of the heel is the recommended site for sampling. Avoid the posterior curvature at the middle of the back of the heel and the central arch of the foot because the bone in these areas is near the surface, increasing the risk of damage and infection. Swollen areas, 
Previous puncture sites and toes should also be avoided. Before taking a sample, make sure you positively identify the patient. Identification generally requires asking the parent or guardian to verify a minimum of two identifiers, such as first name, last name and date of birth of the baby. Some institutional guidelines recommend you consider swaddling the baby or administering a small amount of oral sucrose prior to the procedure. Sucrose has been shown to have a mild analgesic and calming effect. Always follow the specific guidelines recommended by your institution and consult with the primary caregiver. You may also consider warming the sample site. This has the effect of increasing blood flow to the area and may be particularly helpful when sampling for tests that require a larger blood volume. To warm the site, cover with a warm moist towel or other warming device with a standardised temperature of up to 42 degrees centigrade or 107 degrees Fahrenheit for 1 to 2 minutes. Be careful not to scald the infant or baby. Disinfect the sampling site using the method recommended in your institution's guidelines. Allow the area to air dry. If you're using alcohol to disinfect, Make sure it is fully air dried before performing the procedure, as alcohol can cause inaccurate results by hemolyzing the specimen. Grasp the heel using the correct hold to avoid bending the foot back towards the shin, which could cause injury. Press the safety lancet or heel incision device firmly against the heel. Activate the lancet by pressing the button. The needle or blade will puncture the skin very swiftly, then automatically retract into the device to prevent reuse and needle stick injury. Once the lancet has been used, dispose of it by placing it into a biohazard sharps container. The used device must not be disposed of in a regular waste container. The colour of the sharps container will depend on your local region's guidelines. After you have made the incision, Wipe away the first drop of blood with a clean gauze pad. This will help to avoid specimen dilution with interstitial fluid, which can lead to inaccurate test results. Some tests do not require this step. Therefore, check your institution's guidelines to verify which tests require the first drop of blood to be wiped away before collection of sample for testing. Depending on the test, you can use a variety of methods to collect the blood sample. If you're using blood collection paper, allow a large drop to form. Carefully fill each circle from the front side of the card, using only a single drop of blood. Avoid touching the heel to the blood collection paper while applying blood to the circle. If you're using a capillary tube, hold one end horizontally and touch it to the blood droplets at the puncture site. Fill the tube while trying to minimize air infiltration and air bubbles in the tube. Gently massage the heel to maintain a continuous blood flow. When sufficient blood has been collected, place caps on both ends of the tube to allow for mixing and to minimize air contamination. Be careful not to use a scraping or scooping motion or squeeze the heel too hard, as excessive pressure can cause test result errors. Some of the pre-analytical errors include hemolysis, dilution of the specimen and obstruction of blood flow. Squeezing the heel too hard may also increase discomfort for the baby and increase the risk of bruising. Alternatively, you may need to collect the sample in a specially designed collection tube by allowing blood droplets to drip and flow into the tube by natural capillary action. It is also important not to use a scraping or scooping motion here. When you have finished collecting the blood sample, use a bandage to cover the wound. Collection tubes contain certain additives specific to the test or tests for which they are designed. You will need to ensure that the collection tube is filled to the right level to enable a mix of blood and additive. Under or overfilling the tube can also lead to inaccurate test results. It is important to gently mix the blood and the additive well. To aid this process, it may be helpful to gently swirl the tube after each drop of blood is collected. 
once you have collected the necessary amount of blood, you should carefully invert the tube five to 10 times to ensure that specimen and additive are well combined. Do not shake the tube as this causes hemolysis. Failure to mix well immediately after collection or under or overfilling the tube can lead to specimen rejection and test result errors. For test-specific information on storage temperature, handling, processing and testing of the capillary specimen, refer to your institution's guidelines. It is generally recommended to analyse the specimen promptly. Sample with confidence with the Unistick range of single-use safety lancets and sample right first time.